Nearly all sewing projects have instructions of some kind. Otherwise, how would you know where to start making your project or piece of clothing? Hi there, it's Miss Jones from Sew with Miss Jones. Let's take a look at the guide sheet that comes with the Felt Friends kits from Start to Sew. If you're working in a classroom, it's a good idea to put your name on uh, your guide sheet and your individual pattern pieces. Others might be doing a project like yours. That way we won't get things mixed up. It's always a good idea to read through the whole guide sheet before you start your project. I've been sewing forever and that's what I do every time I start something new. There's a lot of vocabulary terms that you might not be familiar with. If so, you might want to highlight or underline the terms um, that you don't know. These might be explained somewhere else. You could uh, ask someone who knows how to sew, or you might have to Google the term. Just make sure you find the sewing definition. Otherwise, you could get more confused. This guide sheet has some general instructions, like right side and wrong side of the fabric. The right side will show and the wrong side will be on the inside. With felt, it doesn't matter before the first stitch, but once you start sewing, it will make a difference. We want all the pretty bits on the outside or right side and the knots and messy bits on the inside or wrong side. In the diagram, the dark gray means right side and the white parts mean wrong side. Your guide sheet might tell you how to place your pins, this one says to place pins perpendicular on the felt. I use perpendicular to the edge for machine sewing, but I put pins parallel on the inside of the solid line for cutting or for hand sewing. I find this works best for me. This guide sheet has some washing instructions. Read carefully. If you make your stitches way too big or if you don't knot your threads to start and stop, your project could fall apart and that would be really sad. There are many different hand stitches. Two of them are explained on the guide sheet. If you don't understand, check YouTube or your teacher's resources. Also, your teacher might suggest other stitches that look just as good but may be easier for a new stitcher. There's a ruler at the bottom of the page. Uh, become familiar with how different measurements look. I'll be talking mostly about 1 8 inch and 1 4 inch. You may need to measure these at first to get your eyes used to what you should be seeing. Sometimes sewists make little marks on their fingers to remind themselves how big or how far apart stitches should be. The guide sheet has little boxes that you can check off as you complete. This will help you keep track of where you are. It will give you directions on how to trim your pattern. Um, make sure that you use paper scissors. Don't use your fabric scissors if at all possible because paper will dull the, the blades of your scissors and you don't want your pieces looking like you chewed them with your teeth. In later videos, I will explain how to uh, trim your pattern, lay out your pieces and cut out the parts of your project. There's some information about marking. Um, I almost never mark like this because it can get really messy and you could damage your project. I will show you an alternative way to make sure that pieces end up where they're supposed to go. But if your teacher asks you to do it a different way, follow those directions. She or he will be doing the evaluation of your project, not me. Now we finally get to the instructions of how to put things together. Make sure you pay close attention to where you should and where you should not do hand stitching. Some pieces get stacked on top of each other and don't need the lumps of previous stitching underneath. And I usually stitch things like pupils onto the eyeballs before attaching. There's a label you can attach to the back if you want, but it's optional. Then you will be putting the front and the back together and stitch almost all the way around the outside edge. Don't stitch it completely closed. You'll need a space to put your stuff in. After stuffing, the last thing you'll do is stitch up that last little bit um, where the stuffing went in. There's an evaluation form at the end of this guide sheet because felt friends are designed for students to do as a school project. Your teacher may use a different format for evaluating your work. 
So that's it, the guide sheet. It has a lot of important information for you. Don't lose it. See you next time when we take a look at the pattern.